Welcome to my desk. The sun is shining. So warm outside. The ground looks like a giant bowl of honey bunches of oats. And I stole a couple leaves and I thought maybe I could paint one or two or I don't know, an assortment. So yeah, I have this urge to just paint and I thought maybe painting something super simple would come easy. So we'll have a little like paint with me, chat with me sort of vibe video. So if that sounds like fun, I don't know, grab some supplies and uh, come along with me. Let's get into it, shall we? I also got this candle this week and I'm, I've am i only just like tested it, but it's so good. It smells like apples and trees and the cider mill. So I'm gonna light that, why not? Let's set the mood. Anyway, I think I wanna pick a leaf. I wasn't sure. First I was gonna paint on this, but then I don't know, I thought maybe that'd be too big. And you're like, you're supposed to prime these surfaces, but I don't really feel like doing that. So then I was like, well, why don't I paint on this? I've painted on this without priming it before. Like it's super absorbent and it like dries the crap out of your paint and you have to layer it a lot and it's annoying, but that's the kind of torture that I'm kind of, kind of open to at the moment. Like I don't really, I don't really mind. It'll be fine. I also have some water here. I have a palette for palleting. But I was thinking, ooh, it's a little too big, but I love the coloring. Sorry, we're just working on the composition here. It would be really nice to put like a little yellow leaf with a brown leaf. Mmm, the candle's starting to smell. <laughs> um, I don't want it too busy. I kind of want to be able to focus on the tiny little intricacies. Like if we look at this, there's like bright yellows in the middle and then they fade into this more burnt orange and there's like yellow along the seam, but then it's like darker in the little veins. Like that's what I really want to focus on with like the little speckles. So I think what it comes down to is we're either doing just one little leaf or two. My brain says to try and just do the one because then look, you get that really fun teeny tiny dainty line with the little blob at the end. I probably won't want it to like lead right to this little spot. I don't want to like point at it. See how this looks like an arrow pointing at the little dot. So then it's an exclamation point. I suppose if that's what you wanted, that'd be kind of cool. But it's not what I want. So I think I want it kind of more like that. Obviously I'm gonna draw it so it won't be exact, but something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. So we can put these guys away. Okay, so let's just take it simple, one step at a time. I'm gonna start with a flat brush like this. This is a Grace Art brush, one of them cheap Amazon brushes I've had forever. And I'll probably sketch in like a burnt umber with a little bit of water. Ooh, that was disgusting. Add a little bit of water. Ooh, that was a lot of water. I don't think I normally do it like that. So I basically want a blob with a line. I'm gonna take some of the water and some of the paint. And then once that's pretty well saturated, you can go and sketch. So essentially there's one, two, three, four, five like veins, it looks like, that kind of come from the center. And then the stem will kind of like come from there. So we'll just kind of sketch that in. And then I actually have no idea how to do this. Kind of, let's start with the veins. Uh, so five of those. I want to look at it straight on. I like this shape where it like kind of comes down and up. Focus on the basic shapes because there's lots of like little pointy bits, but I need to get like the biggest ones down first. And not to mention like there's lots of shape in it and then it also curls. <laughs> so this is going to be very tricky. I'm glad I just did the one. There's actually a lot more going on here. And I think I even realized right, right. And then I want the little like blob at the end of that. Everything's looking a little high. I don't know, maybe I'll just get a saw and cut off the bottom. <laughs> Would that be the easiest thing to do? Probably not. All right, so we've got the basic shape down. I could make the stem a little longer. That'll bring it lower on the page. I could make this whole thing a little taller. So like if we bring it all down, just bring all of the shapes lower. Let's grab some water and almost create like some shadow. I gotta redraw in these veins because they kind of got messed up. And obviously there'll be bits coming off of that. Oh, that's actually where that piece comes from. Okay, I'm seeing it now. I think I want to create even more jaggediness in these shapes. So right now I'm kind of following the reference a bit, but I think I need to like, <laughs> what does that mean? Let me find the word, exaggerate. I want to like exaggerate the shapes, really play around with them. And like, that's something you'll obviously improve with the more you draw leaves. For now, I can kind of try. Also, I curled this way more than I wanted to. I really loved how straight that stem was. And for some reason I added a little like cherry little floop. I was not the intention, but here we are. 
But for now, I feel like we might be ready to add like a base layer of a nice warm orange. So I'm gonna grab, I've got some primary yellow. Ooh, that's a lot. If I remember correctly, these are very translucent, which is annoying, but we can add some matte white, which is super opaque to it, to help create some base for the yellow to stick to. And then we'll add a little bit of this primary red or orange. Let's just get it all on here, why not? We've got all these paints, might as well use them. I also have a lizard and crimson, which I actually think is gonna be more useful than any of these other things. So let's throw that in there. And let's just kind of mix up a color and then some white. Just kind of, like I said, I wanna kind of make it more opaque. Kind of try and create an orange, neutralize it a little. I actually wanna try and add some orange. I'm not the best at mixing colors. <laughs> what do you think that needs? <laughs> to make it more like this red? A lizard and crimson? Oh, well, this has purple in it. That might be what's causing some issues. So now it's too pink, right? So let's add a bit of pink. Green? Do I have to add green to this? Yellow's a bit on the cool side. Maybe that'll help. Okay, that's closer. Too vibrant though, so I might add a little more brown. Okay, I think it's a good base color to start with. It's not too bright, it's not too dark. And I can kind of just add in our first layer of color since like I said, it's not primed. So there's probably gonna be a lot to do. Probably be quite a few layers necessary. I'm kind of going for like the mid-tone areas. I'm just kind of filling in blobs of it. Just looking at the leaf, seeing where I see it. Throwing it in. I also want one with a lot more red in it, but I don't want that crimson because it was a little too on the purple side. So I'm gonna grab this red and move it over here and a bunch of brown. We'll use this as our dark color and then we'll probably create more blending between them afterwards. So I'm kind of like, okay with like some contrast right now. So I find it's easier to like tone it down later. Whereas if you're trying to make it more exaggerated afterwards, I find it more difficult. But yeah, anywhere I see some reds, I'm gonna throw this. Obviously we don't want any wood showing, so we gotta fill in all those areas. And I find if I add one flat layer at the beginning, it kind of just flat throughout. Whereas if I am super kind of crazy with my base layer and adding more exaggerated separations in tone, it's just prettier at the end. So that's kind of my goal here. As you can see, I don't know if it literally looks like a leaf, but there's a lot of color and hue shifts, which is what makes me happy in paintings. So I'm really trying to focus on having a lot of those. So make sure we don't have any wood showing. That's kind of the goal of this first layer is to block out any of that base wood color. So let's get rid of it. This whole little area here should be a brighter color leading up into this. Looks pretty good. It's also, I think I will try. Just add a little bit of this green to it to create like a desaturated area. We don't want a lot, right? But like right here, maybe mix these two together. And this should create like a grayer version. And then we can add that in here too, wherever I see a slight smidge of less saturation. Got some add texture here where there's gonna be veins. Add some brown to this. Make a darker desaturated version. So I need a little more oomph. Kind of just like a cooler version of it. There's some building it up. Anywhere where it didn't quite make sense. Kind of just find it as you go. Kind of creating more texture where the veins are gonna end up because there's like a lot of crumpliness. Gonna need more shadowy bits. Okay, I feel like we're getting into the like who rendered for our current stage. Like I feel like it's trying to define it too much and therefore it's not looking right anymore. So I'm gonna slow down here, stop creating such small blobs and focus on getting it to look more like this. What I wanna do next is add some yellow. So I'm gonna actually just take a bunch of this white and a little bit of the yellow. Let's try that. Can I just follow along? It's actually a really fat brush, but like I said, I wanna kinda keep it pretty big still. It's also still very transparent and the paint's a little wet. Just go in with some bigger blobs. Like I said, I think I got a little too rendered too quickly. It also just kind of needs to be brighter anyway. Although I do like the colors in it, it doesn't really follow the reference. So, go in here a little bit. I'm gonna just create some more flat shapes. Trying to follow the idea of the veins and everything. All right, now there's a little too much contrast between these different shapes. I almost kind of just want to color over the whole thing with this yellow now. Yeah, I think I will. I'm just gonna... Let's just kind of flatten out the stuff. 
actually kind of looks kind of nice especially when you squint and look at it from a distance but we want to be able to see it a little up closer than that so essentially there's like between the veins it like rises and falls so there's like a bevel so you're gonna have like shadow coming from the vein then there's like a bit of highlight and then it goes back down into the next vein that i think would be kind of cool to try and attempt here i'm gonna go to this mid-tone that i had originally and create some more of those shapes in here and I want uh, the highlight right here and like here going towards that like where the stem is and then also here coming up towards the stem and here but mostly on this side because the light's illuminating that way. Like, sometimes this color just comes out really vibrant and sometimes it doesn't. I am confused. Just kind of blend it out. <laughs> Ooh, I love that like straight line there. There's every little once in a while you find like this one brush stroke and then it makes you so happy. And you're like, yes, this is why I paint because of this one brush stroke. So I'm not really trying to draw every little line, but I'm looking at like blobs of color instead of like trying to be super precise, but like saying, oh, there's like sort of a highlight there. So then I go boop, boop, boop like that. Does that make an understand? So I kind of want to do the same thing following this vein because it's like brighter on the top half of it. So I kind of just want to like pull towards where it's going to like curl up. A little highlight here. There's a curl. And when we're done, we're going to probably go around the whole outside with some white and find our perfect little edges. So I don't have to care too much. It's important to know where things are, but they don't have to be perfect. Go with that mid-tone. Mix what I've got on the brush. And I want to fill in this little area, kind of like a blob. And then the same thing here. If I need something a little darker. Grab this, fill in up here, but even darker than that. So maybe grab some of this, smudge those together. Can I curl? Nope, not dark enough. Grab, maybe grab some of this. That is going to be too dark. Oops. Add a little green, tone it down. Ooh, that's not bad. It's also like a little shadow right here. This little area feels a little funky to me. I'm gonna grab the mid-tone here. Kind of just color over, I think. It needs to kind of smooth out a bit. Hmm, looking nice, looking nice. This feels too bright here. Blend that out a little. Kind of want something right here, but not that. <laughs> no, undo. I would like it a little warmer up here. Start adding some reds towards the tip. It's just like a warmer version up here. Ooh, yeah, hey. All right, am I getting too busy again? Am I going too far? You know what it needs? It needs a little like triangle right here. And here, a little triangle here. I'm gonna add a little bit of that cooler color right here. Kind of still looking at it in triangles. All right, I feel like I am getting to the point where it's too busy again, which means I'm gonna end up painting over the whole thing. This vein kind of goes to that, and this vein kind of goes to that. This vein goes to this, this vein goes up to there. Actually, this and this are the exact same lump on the leaf. How did I do that? I'm like looking at it, I'm like, I can't find this lump. It doesn't exist. I'm gonna grab a skinny little guy here. I'm drawing this. I don't know how long he'll survive, but this kind of needs to know where this is. And then this just goes up to this guy. I'm kind of following some of the random shapes that I made earlier, because why not? Hmm, is this too much? I can't decide. I'll probably end up painting over it, so it's like not that big a deal. Interesting. I like the craziness of it, but I don't think it's the vibe I originally intended. So I've added a bunch of these little guys. It's a lot. It kind of looks a little bit like worms, but I kind of want to keep the much. I want it to be there so that when I add in more color now on top, they'll hopefully kind of shine through, but a little bit more subtly than they currently are. I'm just kind of want to go on the outside edge here, create some pointier bits, almost like a shadow, I guess. I'm just creating little organic swirlies along the edge. Almost like a line art, I guess you could say. Now this little bump doesn't exist, so I don't actually know what to do with it. I feel like it should probably be trimmed to like that size. 
Wow, this is kind of looking... Hmm. It's not the vibe I originally intended, but something about it is really fun to me. I mean, I'm not going to call it ultra realistic or nothing, but I don't think that was the goal. I really love like soft painterly where you see blobs of a different color, and this does have that. I'm going to go over this because right now it looks a little patchy. Deepen that up. A little less wood texture throughout. Okay, that has some really fun texture to it. I was not... I was like really nervous about doing that and what i was nervous about did happen but i don't know how mad i am at it like it has a very i don't know in my mind i don't know what this means but it gives me a very like your grandma painted this vibe <laughs> like it means a lot to you but it's not perfect but you're still never gonna throw it away you know that that charm that's what i'm seeing in this of course i painted it so i don't know what that says about me <laughs> but you know mom <laughs> Don't think too much into it. I do want to go around the edge, maybe with some of the white. Let's go with the straight. Ooh, that is gooey gluey. Kind of work on this edge. I haven't decided if the outside is going to be white or not, but it probably is going to have to be if I want to be able to do this. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that because I wanted the wood texture, which is why I painted on the wood and a big reason why I didn't bother even attempting looking for any kind of gesso. <laughs> I could make like an off-white that's closer to the wood grain color. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. I also just want to grab some of this paint, filling in some of these areas just to tone down these little edges I made. I can also like color in new blocks. Bobs. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now I can see new shapes just from the veins that I can like play around with as well. This little area, like I said, I don't know what it is because it doesn't exist. So it's probably going to look a little slop, but we can try our best. Anywhere where the color seems a little too flat. I just want some more yellow in this. A bit closer towards the vein. Hmm, I'm having a hard time formulating a thought about this. I think I don't like it. It's a little mustardy. I'm at the point where we're probably supposed to get to the over-rendering stage. <laughs> I just aren't sure what I'm doing. Kind of going around, blobbing it in. Mm, I think I liked it better when I had larger, flatter areas. If you know what I mean. Some more white, a bit of this, just get a... Around the vein with some of this green. To kind of like push it inwards is my thought process. It's not in the reference. I just want green in here. <laughs> there, how's that for some honesty? Ooh, I like that. I like that actually a lot. And maybe a little bit more of a red version up here. Yellow for, for the tips of like the leafy areas. So they're a little brighter. Ooh, okay. It's like a Charmander color. <laughs> Beautiful. A little bit more green. Go along this edge. I don't know why that just feels right to me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going with it. Again, the goal was to have fun, and this sounds like fun. Okay, I've stopped looking at this, and now I'm just kind of like being a bit more painterly with it. And I'm liking it. A little brighter green here. Shadow there. And that shadow kind of creates a triangle here. Yeah, a little right. I think I'm filling this whole thing with this. I think I need to let it dry a little bit. I'm loving the hue variations in it. Love, 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 love it. But I do want to let that dry just a little bit. I also want this Charmander color. I want it right here and right here. Add a little more white to it. Brighten it even more. I feel like really make this pop up here. Maybe create a little highlight along the vein. I might grab this brush. It's dry and kind of just blend that edge. Also, this. This is from like a shirt I got. I had those things so it stays on the hanger. I wonder, should I like put a little bow? It would be a last minute thing. I'm just asking for opinions, that's all. I also want to take this bright color and create just a little highlight on the edge so that it kind of curls. I also, why don't I just mix a bit more of that? and go along this edge of the vein in some areas where it just needs a little pop, blend it out. I also kind of want to make an orange version of this, like an orange, bright orange. And some more yellow. See how that looks. And right here, and here, and... Now that I'm seeing it with the orange, I think I want orange in this one too. Too much, too much. Needs more of the green now. Blend it, blend it. Back to the yellow one, maybe. Gonna add some variation to the highlights. 
So they're not all yellow and they're not all orange. Honestly, it's got the perfect amount of painterly that I love. So I'm kind of scared what I should do from here. I need like a little, there needs to be like a shape there of some color. I think one of the lighter green. I just kind of want to add a little blob right here. Break up that shape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I want that anywhere else? Ooh la la. It's got so much, like, so many hue shifts in it that makes me really happy. Okay, I'm gonna go around the edge with the burnt umber again. Find some of these shapes. What about this one? Can we curl him like whoosh? Ooh, we could do a little wine art vibe here. I'm just trying to make sure none of the little edges all, I mean, none of them look the same, like copy paste. I think that's what's gonna really help make it look organic. Okay, this little area needs work and that area needs work. Need a little shadow. I think it actually needs to be the green. I'm really not sure what to do with that. It doesn't look right either way. You just kind of change it all together. That's not bad, that's better. Ooh, it's got so much just fun going on, you know? What do we do about the background? <laughs> got a little highlight to the stem. I need to look at this a little better. It's just kind of darker here. Ooh, that helped. If I was going to change anything, I would take this little section, shrink it down and like curl it a little, but it's a painting, so I kind of have to just be okay with it. I could try and cut into it a little bit more, make it look shorter. All right, I think the next step, I'm really happy with the leaf. Sorry, I had a paintbrush in my mouth. <laughs> I'm really happy with the leaf. It is high. Can't do anything about that. Unless I paint the whole background white. Why don't we try and color match this wood? I have no idea. I mean, actually I'm quite certain I don't have the skill set for this, but I kind of just want to try anyway. I'm going to start with a bunch of white and this goop I have already here. Okay, let's go over this. That'll be a good first place to, ooh, okay. That's not bad. It should probably be a little darker though. I'm going to grab this color blob it in there. We can stick it clean up this edge. I actually might use. Try using the smaller brush. I can do maybe some textury stuff with it. Little JC Lion Decker vibe. Yeah, add some like texture outside of it. Hmm, I'm kind of happy with this idea. And then I create little like brush strokes for the Lion Decker effect. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's called, but I'm calling it that. So now I can even refine these edges and go over the areas where like the paint caught the, the grain of the wood and just flowed through the channels. I don't want to color that in yet because the color I have is perfect and that's all wet and I'm going to pick up other colors if I do that. So let's stick around here first. Oh, that is crazy. I did a really good job. Color matching. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. I've impressed myself. You almost can't see it. Go all the way around, cleaning up the edges. Okay, is this dry yet here? Nope, but now it's gone. Maybe if I use this bigger brush. Ooh, see how much better that looks now that there's like a little refined edge in there. That was like the whole reason I did this color matching thing. Worth it. Worth it. I do need to go over this a little bit. I might. I'm considering adding another white border around it just because I did too good a job color matching and so it looks like I tried to color match it because <laughs> it's so close. But obviously you can see it because it's a different texture than the wood. I could try and just blob this in. I'll throw in a little bit more here. Just grab a little white, mix it into what's here and even brighten it up even more. And we'll continue with that like edgy stuff like this. It almost reminds me of when I do like magic particles. I could add a couple of those too, I suppose. Oh, I like this. All right, another good idea. Now I can actually put it in even more places and I don't think it'll look too weird. I think that makes it really fun. I also kind of like it. It makes me think of snow, which comes after fall. <laughs> add some little dots next. I feel like I'm going a little overboard. There might be too many now. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit before I walk away because I want to see if I should do anything else to this. Don't like this edge of the off-white. Should I try and remix this color? It's not the same. I think it's probably close enough to be able to like add in the texture that I want here. And I can incorporate it like all over the place too. Might as well just put it everywhere. <laughs> now it's like a three-tone background element instead of trying to hide my mistakes. See how I took that and now I've made it into part of the storytelling? <laughs> and I think 
I'm done. I would like my name to be in brown because it just is really subtle. Does that even look like an R? Wait, let me just try going upward. All right, now you can see it. I wanted that dark because the picture is also high and there's a lot of space there. So by like putting it there, kind of grounds it a little bit. Again, it doesn't really look like the reference. I feel like as soon as I threw away the reference, it started coming together a little easier. I am so glad I decided to go around the outside edge. Whether or not you like the funny background texture element, I am very, very happy that I did for one very specific reason, and that was to add this white right here so that that stem just like pokes through right in that spot. I feel like that goes a long way in making it look like a leaf, and that makes me really happy. And it has that painterly hue shifting that I love about painting, and was the whole reason I wanted to sit down and do this in the first place. Anyway, I'll have links in the description to all the supplies I used today, and uh, thanks for coming along with me as I painted dish leaf in my style, I guess. Hope everyone's falls are going nice, enjoying this weather. I know not everyone's having this amazing weather, but if you are, I hope you're enjoying it. And if you're not, just know I am enjoying it and not wasting it for you. <laughs> Do I want to put this bow on here? It could be cute. That would fix the little nothing happening down here thing. Ah, uh, I feel like it's too much. Yeah, we're going no, no ribbon, but I tried. Anyway, this is my finished piece, I guess, officially. Again, thank you guys for coming along with me as I painted the leaf. I hope you all have a delicious evening for waffles. Bye.